All right, welcome back to the final round. All three majors off 6% as we head towards the bell. Joining us now to discuss is Seema Shah. She is the chief strategist at Principal Global Advisors. So Seema, when you look at the market right now, we're, we're so fixated on what's happening in the equity market. But um, when you look at the credit market, which is where often we see uh, the most significant signs of stress, we'll say, heading towards a recession, what kind of, what is the credit market telling you right now about uh, the recession fears that I think the equity market has been very quick to price all the way in? Right, so this is a really, really important question, is just to watch what's going on in the credit market. If we think back to the US-China trade war and people started talking about recession, we were a little bit, we, we were quite calm about the recession risk because credit spreads were still so tight. I mean, realistically, how can you have a recession when the corporate sector is in such good health? Unfortunately, what we've seen over the weekend, and certainly it started a few days ago, was the credit market, the credit spreads have started to widen. And this is a real concern. It's been exacerbated by the oil price shock. The reason for that is that U.S. high yield index, it has a pretty significant component of it is energy companies. So as you see those credit spreads widen, it's increasing the chance of defaults and bankruptcies. And we're really taking away the one last safety blanket that we had in terms of recession risk models, which is why the credit market is going to be the one thing that's going to tell you, is this simply a transitory shock or is this going to extend it to something more durable? And what do you think it's telling you right now? I think as you combine that with all the other pieces that we're seeing, we are hearing from people that recession risk is more likely. Just looking at the labor market, which our last jobs report, it was fantastic. But anecdotally, I've talked to people who say they can't even bring anybody in for a job interview right now. Isn't that going to bleed into some sort of recession risk here? Yeah, absolutely. Look, recession risk has increased. Um, I'd say that on our own recessionary risk models, uh, it's still not our baseline scenario, but it is something that we're watching very carefully. All of those uh, economic indicators that will be coming out day by day uh, are going to give us a pretty good sign. But I would say that, look, equity markets is one is one indicator, and certainly the falls that we've seen um, are adding to those to those red flashing signals. But that credit market number, you know, it's it's still not even close to well, it's close to 2016 highs, but it's not close to very very worrying levels. But if it continues to increase then we will be worried. That's the fact that we're going to be watching closest over the next few days. Seema, so we've been talking to a lot of market experts on our programming, and we have about half of them say, OK, it's a buying opportunity. But the other half is saying, no, it's not the time to jump in. So I want to get your thoughts on where you stand on those two, those two um, out ways of thinking about the current sell-off. Yeah, sure. I definitely I would be suggesting to buy the dip. Um, I think there's further to go from here. Uh, we've already had very, very significant falls and valuations are looking pretty cheap now. Uh, technicals, you know, with a lot of people selling out of their positions, even the technicals are looking quite attractive too. But those fundamentals are what's going to be driving things from here. And for me, we're watching the credit market, but also it's really going to be driven by the number of coronavirus cases. And as we've heard from, you know, time and time again over the last week or so, Europe and the US are most likely at the very beginning stages of this. So are those numbers continue to increase, that there's going to be growing fears around the market. So for me, this is not yet the time to be buying the dip. And then, you know, Seema, buy the dip strategies go hand in hand with what happens with central banks and, and notably the Fed. They've stepped in pretty aggressively so far. The market thinks they have a long way to go. And maybe thinking bigger picture about where we go when coronavirus is over, let's say if that is in uh, two, three or four quarters, are we at the end of this period where central bank um, actions have essentially told you, give or take, what's going to happen in markets? And, and are we going to be looking at a new paradigm when we get through this period of volatility? I mean, look, I think that's a great question. I think what we did see was that last week with that, um, that very significant 50 basis point cut from the Fed and the way that the market reacted, it really exposed a lot of the frailties that the Fed is facing at the moment with very limited firepower and also a shock which the Fed is really not uh, is not occupied or is not um, it's not tooled to to deal with. Now we do think that there's going to be a Fed response, a, a, a global central bank response over the next few days. We think it's going to be focused on liquidity measures, probably helping out those small to medium sized business struggling the most, both with the oil price shock and with the coronavirus. But we also think there's really increased space for fiscal authorities to come in here. Mm -hmm. Now at the end of all this. You know, it depends on how long it goes on for, but we could see that if it is a temporary shock, you've just seen central bank action, which is going to firepower risk assets on the other side of this. But as I said, it's very early days to know whether or not this is just transitory or it's going to be something that we're extending into the second half of this year. All right. Seema Shah is the chief strategist with Principal Global Investors. Thanks so much for the time.
Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.